What is the purpose of photography? Look up videos and you will find thousands of answers to that question. Somebody who's mainly doing advertising photography is doing it for a very different reason than somebody who is doing photojournalism. The whole point of photojournalism is that you never touch those photos. Once they're taken, that's it. You don't change them. A portrait photographer changes stuff all the time. A fashion photographer is working with a model who is in turn moving themselves around in order to make sure that they look the best they can look when they are presenting this product. And those are just a few examples. It goes even deeper. And that is why I really hate this question. Because it's not a question that is answerable. It's a question that's answerable to you, and it's a question that is answerable to the person who is asking it. But if they tell you, here's the answer, all they're doing is saying, here's my answer. And while that does have merit to it, especially if it's somebody who's been doing it a long time, it doesn't actually answer the question. You might be taking photographs for a completely different reason. So, how do you know what f the purpose of photography is for you? You go and take tons of pictures. And so today, we are going to talk about taking photographs. Now, you might be saying to yourself, awesome, I've got my DSLR and I'm ready to go. But, we're not going to use these today. Don't worry, I'm going to do a whole video, a whole series of videos on this thing and how to use it, particularly in manual mode, so that you have control over what it is that you are taking. However, that's not where we're going to start, because while some of you might have this, all of you probably have a phone. I mean, you're watching this video. And so, we are going to talk about the very basics of composition. And then you can go and you can practice a few of these things just with your phone, without having to worry about your aperture and your shutter speed and your ISO and your focal distance and everything else. And we will get into all of that in the future. But for right now, let's get into it. While it is impossible to answer what is the purpose of photography, whenever you get your camera out, there is a reason you decided to take a picture. You've got to know what that reason is in order for the picture to communicate what it is you were trying to communicate in the first place. That on the table, let's talk about composition. Really often when people go to take a picture, they think that's what I'm taking a picture of, so I'm going to put it in the middle of the frame. But this is very, very rarely the right place or the best place to put it. Especially if you really center them in the frame and they're down like here. You can see, this just doesn't look good. I have all this space above my head. I have all this space on either side of me. My dad used to call this elephant ears. But a way that you can avoid doing this is by thinking of the rule of thirds. The rule of thirds is really, really simple. You break your frame into third here, a third here, a third here, and a third here. Now you've got a grid. Now what you want to do is put your subjects on those third lines. What that's going to do is create something for your eye to move across. So you'll notice when you look at this image, my face is where two of those third lines intersect. Behind me, this light is right on this third line. This light is right on this third line. This is all designed so that you see me, and then your eye is going to travel back to see this mirror and see what's in the mirror, and then travel further back to see this, and then travel back into the rest of my photography studio. At least the rest of my photography studio that's in this frame. This is a really, really simple concept that makes such a huge difference when you keep it in mind. If you think about trying to keep things on the thirds, you will almost immediately start getting more interesting images. And if you think about how your eye moves from your main subject back, you will also almost immediately start getting more interesting images. So, that's number one. Next is what is called the golden spiral. More or less something that looks like this. More or less. The whole idea is that you are breaking your image into the cluster of things you want people to look at the most, and then you are moving their eye back gradually. You will see this in everything. In old photographs, in old paintings, in old everything. It is one of the fundamental principles of composition since the Renaissance. Now, when you are photographing people, you always want to think about where you are shooting from. Almost everybody, because of selfies, now knows that if you get higher and you take a picture down, you tend to look better because it hides any of this and any of this and you know. 
There are other things too, though. For instance, right now, I'm not really sucking in my gut because I don't need to, but I am bending forward from my waist. And if I were to suck in my gut like that and bend forward, then I'm gonna make the appearance of my having a bit of a belly much less noticeable. And you'll also notice that my shoulders look a little bit more like broad, my face looks a little bit slimmer, my neck looks like it's slimming down a little bit. And part of that is because whatever part of someone's body you have closest to the lens of the camera, it is going to look bigger. You can use this to your advantage in a lot of different circumstances. For instance, this, I am getting my face closer to the lens. I am getting my shoulders kind of at a broad angle so that they look bigger. I'm putting myself at an angle to the camera. If I just sit straight on, then it doesn't give me as much dimension. But as soon as I give myself a little bit of extra dimension, all of the sudden I look a lot more dynamic. And you can also use this if you're trying to like accentuate a body part. If you want to make somebody's chest look a little bit bigger, if you want to make somebody's backside look a little bit bigger, if, whatever. If that part of their body is closer to the camera than the rest of the body, it'll make that part of the body look a little bigger and make the rest of their body look a little slimmer. You also wanna think about exactly what it is that you are shooting. Say you're taking pictures of flowers. If you get right down next to the flower and you kind of shoot it from its point of view, you're gonna get a much more interesting picture than taking it from where you are standing. And part of this is just the way that cameras work. So when you see something with your eyes, your brain focuses in on that thing and it can kind of take the rest of what is there and make it background. But the camera can't do that. The camera can only see what is in front of it. You have to make it so that the camera is focusing on that thing. If you get your camera right down next to that flower, you put that on a third line, you put that on a golden spiral, or you let that just fill up the frame, your camera is going to get a much more interesting picture of that than if you're standing where you saw it and taking a picture. Because when you're doing that, you're asking the viewer to find what you found when you were standing there looking. Instead of showing the viewer what it is that you saw and what it is that you thought was interesting. One thing that you can do, when, instead of letting your camera be like this, sideways, turn it vertical. In fact, I'll squeeze in here just so that you can see. Now, I'm still on a third line. My chest is still on a third line down here. The composition has changed, but the rule of thirds is still in play here. And what I've done is focused in on just me so that you don't have to look at the rest of everything else. Now, again, I framed this so that the rest of everything else is at least considered. It's not maybe the best setup for it, but it is at least considered. So the only thing I don't like about the rule of thirds is that it's called a rule, because it's not really a rule, it's a suggestion. Whenever we talk about theory in any way, whether we're talking about it in photography, whether we're talking about it in music and performance and whatever, it's still theory, right? It works most of the time. What we're really saying is, look, we've experimented with this for a long time. The things that we have found that work the best are these things. You can follow those things and you will probably get pretty good results but they're not hard and fast rules, just like keys in music. We know that all these notes sound good together, so you can think of it as in this key. And we know that this key, relative to this key, is gonna sound really, really good. It's not to say that you can't do anything else. That's ridiculous, of course you can. If you didn't do anything else, then the entire like artistic idea would fall apart. The whole reason that art continues to be interesting is because keep, people keep pushing it, right? So, as I said, this is just basic, basic, basic stuff. Stuff. This is the very beginning of composition, the very beginning of the understanding of making an image. We will get so much deeper into this as we delve further and further into photography. But like I said, this is a great beginning and you can do it without a big camera. Just go out with your phone and try to take some pictures and see what works, see what doesn't, see what you like, see what you don't. As with everything else we talk about, worst that can happen is that it doesn't work. And so what? You delete a picture. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, comments, things that you would like for me to talk about in greater detail, or things that you feel should have been in this video, leave a comment. Also, just leaving comments helps more people see this, and it helps more people see me and what I do and all of that. And of course, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that share button, you know the drill. And if you would like to support what I am doing even more, head over to Patreon, become a patron. There's some extra stuff that goes up there. You will also have my undying gratitude. But whether you do any of that or not, I am still so grateful that you took the time 
to watch this video, to hear what I had to say. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. And I will see you next time. Bye. Watch me break a rule. Oh, videos.